Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of The Sports Room. I know we've not done this in a while, but this is kind of an important episode. Um, of course, when the NFL season starts, they're all important episodes, but this one was kind of like a, like a needs must type thing. Um, I've got, um, got a friend of mine, Will Parkinson, who is a massive Jets fan, one of the voices of um, Jets Twitter, so it's much, it's much appreciated. Thanks for joining me. Um, how are you doing today? How's everything? Uh, you know, it could, mixed bag of emotions. Um, you know, obviously last night, you know, in, in very exciting, kind of impressive victory over Buffalo. And, um, you know, obviously the big story, Aaron Rodgers being done for the year with a ruptured Achilles. So, yeah, it's one of those, uh, one of those games where you, you kind of win the, win the battle, lose the war type of situation. Um, you know, we'll see what happens kind of going forward here. Uh, you know, Robert Sala spoke today about Zach Wilson being the starter. So, That'll be interesting, uh, but in, in generally speaking, I, I think you know, um, obviously, an incredibly impressive victory yesterday, and team looks very good. So it's it's definitely disappointing to you know lose your starting quarterback uh, four plays into the game. I mean, of course, you're you're in New York, you're around the Jets fan base, etc. What was the mood like prior to last night, like the off season, going into the season? What was what was the talk saying? How did everyone feel about um, about the Jets this year? I know it's gut wrenching. I'm really sorry, but yeah, no, it's. I think. Uh, I think everyone's kind of, um, you know, in a in a spot of, you know, truly. There was some true like Super Bowl expectations, um, you know, and it's 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 tough. I, it's it's just one of those situations where you, you kind of look at it and, you know, you, this is kind of similar to 1999 for a lot of Jets fans. They came off the AFC Championship game in 1998. Uh, won a playoff home game, and then coming to 1999, a lot of expectations, and they lose the starting quarterback for the test for torn Achilles on the like third drive of the game. This time, it sped up to the fourth play of the game. Um, so, um, you know, it's it, it's it's unfortunate, uh, but I, I think this, this fan base is it was the loudest MetLife's been uh, in the last at least decade. Uh, so it's it was definitely disappointing, obviously from a. Uh, from a fan perspective, just you know, being in the building, knowing, wow, like <laughs> their season might be over before it starts. I mean, it, it is. It's not every day that um, a four-time MVP, someone that's literally just coming off back-to-back -back MVP seasons a year before last, comes to your organization. I mean, I mean, the aspirations are only Super Bowl um, expectations. Um, we're only going to. I want to. I want to ask you about two more things before we move on from the injury. Um, the first thing is. Um, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on the field and the turf and everything that's being said about the turf, the turf at MetLife? Because I know they changed it. I know um, after the injury last year to Sterling Shepard during the um, during one of the Giants games, um, that was obviously a big talking point where he just pulled up and he tore his ACL. And this season again, they changed it and it's it's a talk of the it's, it's talk of the game again. So so what would you make of what you make of that? And it, and it seems to be it seems yeah, to be no, more look. common in MetLife Stadium. I don't know what it is. It's like at MetLife, it's just the turf monster just seems to. Yeah, be. the turf is the turf's a problem. Um, you, you saw Jets. There's Jets fans, Jets players talking about it last night. There was some, you know, Darius Slay, the Eagles mentioned it. Jason Kelsey's mentioned, you know, they replaced the turf. It's brand new, brand new turf. Uh, they play on it. Uh, the Giants playing on Sunday, and then uh, you know Monday in Jets fashion, uh, a Jets quarterback gets hurt, and, and not someone from the Giants. Um, but yeah, the turf there has been a problem. You know, it was grass, obviously. You know, at the at the old stadium, and um, you know they they obviously made it to be turf, and it's it's highly unfortunate. It's it's a huge talking point across the U.S. and in MetLife specifically. Of you know they're trying to host the World Cup final in in three years, and um, you know, obviously you're not going to host that on turf, but changing it for the World Cup, as much as I'm a diehard Bayern fan and I watch, you know, more footy than anybody, you know, the team whose stadium it is should, probably should be catered to them more than anybody else. So it's a huge issue. It's an issue across a bunch of stadiums and, you know, leagues, but um, the Jets specifically, Jets and Giants in my life, it's, it's been a problem. And, um, you know, as much as it was unfortunate for Sterling Shepard last year, uh, you know, <laughs> Losing Aaron Rodgers is a bit a, a bit bigger, bit of a bigger deal, unfortunately. No, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. I mean, that's one of the greatest, one of the best quarterbacks right now. So you you and then you add all of these weapons, and I mean, Miko Hardman, Garrett Wilson, obviously get finally getting a quarterback. It's gonna, I mean, it's just there was just unlimited potential for the Jets. The final thing I'm going to touch on is um, the situation about the cut blocks. 
um, there was a lot of talk around um, the tackles because we saw it on about two or three different plays yesterday where um, where your offensive tackles went to do a cut block rather than um, rather than a, a standard block and apparently Rogers actually mentioned that he didn't like that and it was just ironic that not ironic but it's just unfortunate that that was the situation I mean how true is that that um, Darren Rogers was against it and yeah I don't <laughs> I don't know on this one it seems a little Rogers like all offseason was Rogers offense and then magically all of a sudden it wasn't when uh, you know when it came to this so I'm not sure I buy it in in, in all honesty is I'm not trying to beat up on Rogers it was obviously incredibly unfortunate and horrible but he should have thrown the ball um that never happens if he just gets rid of the ball in time the reads there it's right in front of his face he doesn't he doesn't pull it down and you know obviously unfortunate football play happens he gets foot gets caught in the turf and it's terrible but yeah I, the cut blocking thing feels a little convenient this morning um trying to look for somebody to blame um but unfortunately sometimes you know life it's happens it's it's football. it sucks <laughs> you know um, I'm, I'm actually writing an article about yeah. it now, and I don't, I don't even know how to start it. It's just, it's just, it's just so heartbreaking for not only Jets and the Jets fans, considering you guys haven't had success for so long, but it's just for Aaron Rodgers himself. He looked rejuvenated. He looked, um, he looked excited again. All these little cool little handshakes and stuff like that. And all of a sudden, it's just, it's a shame. Um, let's let's go on to the game and let's talk about football now. Um, apart from Jordan Whitehead, sorry, yeah. Who was the most impressive for you on defense yesterday? Because um, if there was such thing as defense won you that game, it was that game yesterday. It was it was unbelievable. You suffocated Josh Allen. They couldn't run the ball. They couldn't throw the ball. And it was it was very, very minimal. Everything they did was minimal. Of course, Josh Allen didn't help himself by going, I mean, by trying to force the play. But um, who impressed you the most on defense yesterday, apart from the man that had three interceptions? Yeah, no, uh, Jermaine Johnson, Quincy Williams are two guys that stand out. Um, you know, quite the usual suspects, obviously, the DJ Reeds of the world, Sauce Gardner didn't have his best game, but, um, you know, had a few nice plays later on in the game. More importantly, again, DJ Reed, um, you know, Quinton Williams is obviously one of the three highest paid defensive tackles in football. He's a first team all pro guy. It's no surprise there. A lot of the defensive line, but, you know, you look at Quincy Williams, uh, you look at Jermaine Johnson, two guys that, um, from Quincy's perspective, got paid this offseason. And it's a guy that kind of a boomer bus player, kind of, you know, in soccer, he's like, you know, he'd be a nine and a half out of 10 player. And other times a two out of 10. It just kind of depends on his day. And last night he was on his, he was in his bag a little bit. And then you know, Jermaine Johnson's a guy, first round pick a year ago, uh, you know, started at Georgia, transferred to Juco, back to Florida State, had an awesome senior year. Dominated the senior bowl. The Jets take him, you know, in the first round, they trade up for him. Got started okay last year and then had an ankle injury and just kind of never really got in the rotation and like he was in the rotation, but not a lot. Had a couple, had a couple sacks, a couple tackles for loss, but nothing that made you go, wow, they have a future, you know, star here. And, uh, all camp came back, transformed his body. All camp was fantastic. Preseason was awesome. And then followed up with, uh, with a sack and two tackles for loss, you know, in, uh, yesterday. So those are two guys that kind of stood out to me. Um, I mean, the Jets defensively, it's, I mean, it's incredible. You've got superstars on, on, on all levels of, of, of the field. Um, I want to talk about Brees Hall a little bit. I mean, he looked like he came back and he was right where he left off last night. Um, of course, now that Aaron Rodgers is no longer here, the offense is going to revolve around him a lot more. Um, what did you make of his comeback? And what did you think of the way him and Dalvin Cook complement each other yesterday? I, I, don't, I mean, obviously, as a Vikings fan, I don't think Cook had anywhere near a good game. But um, how do you think that um, that tandem will look going forward now that it's not going to be that pass-heavy, all-guns-blazing kind of offense that Aaron Rodgers was going to, was going to have? Yeah, look, at the end of the day, uh, you know, Brees Hall, you kind of, he looked great in camp, but you weren't sure what you were going to get from him. It felt like a guy who hasn't hasn't gotten hit since October last year, since he hurt the knee, and, you know, you're kind of, you know, wait, waiting to see how he's going to look, and first carry, 26 yards, boom, looks fantastic. Second carry goes 83 yards, you know, breaking tackles, he's making guys miss. Dalvin Cook, I thought, was fine. Um, he kind of did what he was he kind of asking him to do, which is take a lot of the load off of Brees Hall's shoulders early on in the season. Had a, had two had one nice run, one nice catch, had a couple other runs where you kinda were hoping he'd get maybe two or three more yards out of it, you know, keep the shower lowered and stuff like that. But um he was fine. I think 
Dalvin Cook at this point in his career, you kind of want to get him more out in space. He's not really that as much of a between the tackles guy, but you know I, that's a great running back duo. It's a great tandem, obviously, and you know the Jets are gonna have to lean on them. When Brees Hall was in there last year, that this team was five and two and was looking like you know a for sure playoff team, even with Zach Wilson struggling. He gets hurt, and the Jets went you know finished the year two and eight. Uh, so you know he's he's as much as we talk about running backs not being you know. Highly paid and all these different things. He's pretty. He's pretty damn crucial to this team. So, yeah, Brees Hall looking fantastic. We'll see how he looks. You know now. You know next against this Dallas defense, where it feels like he can run a little bit on Dallas. You know they're going to get after the passer. Can he, if the Jets can kind of run the football a little bit, it'll give themselves a shot. But yeah, Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall is a, is a pretty impressive duo. And, and Michael Carter's not a bad guy to have as your third option. No, of course. Um, and of course, Garrett Wilson, the the one once or twice that you asked him to make a play for you, um, he. He did that. I mean, the one in the end zone was, was absolutely amazing. One of the best young wide receivers in the league. But there's there's also, I mean, there's, there's a couple of other guys that were obviously brought in. I mean, Anna Lazard made a few catches. Um, of course, Uzama and uh, Tyler Conklin are, is, is a, it's also another very good uh, tight end duo to have, both in run blocking and pass catching. Um, it just feels like the Jets are stacked all over, um, but it's also gonna, it's always going to come back down to that one position at the quarterback. Do you, as Will, do you trust Zach Wilson to be the one to lead this team going forward? That's the, fir- that's the first part of this question. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> it's tough, right? It's just, I think this team, look, I think this is a really good team. I think this team, outside of quarterback, if you, you know, eliminate Rodgers and Wilson, you just eliminate quarterbacks from teams. Like, this is a team you probably take as a f- top five team in the league, maybe top six at worst. We'll see what happens. Look, they went seven and ten last year. Zach capitulated down the stretch. He got hurt multiple times. Uh, they started games with Joe Flacco, Mike White. They had they had injuries everywhere. They lost their two best offensive players. Like this team's very good. And I think, do I think they can win a Super Bowl with Zach? No, but do I think they can make the playoffs? I, I don't see why not. And um, you know, we'll see. I just I'd much rather them make a move for a quarterback. It seems like they're not going to do that. It seems like they're going to kind of stand pat. Maybe yeah, you know, get a veteran backup. I would have liked them to see maybe a Jameis Winston, Taylor Heineke, guys like that that have, have won games in this league. Um, but, you know, we'll see what happens, obviously. I, I just um, – I mean, we'll see kind of what happens, obviously. But I, I think they're they're okay. <laughs> they're, they might be okay at least to get in the playoffs. No, I feel, I feel like when, you're, when your roster is as stacked as this one is, you don't need an Aaron Rodgers caliber – player to do so well I mean we've seen it before where backup quarterbacks have have taken teams that are much less talented than this one that the Jets have and go to Super Bowls I mean like Nick Foles for example I mean that's just one example Carson Wentz is playing at MVP level but that team was also very very talented we've seen it on multiple multiple occasions where um, a team uh, I mean you don't need an Aaron Rodgers type quarterback to I mean that's an all that's a Hall of Famer that's an all pro caliber quarterback Aaron Rodgers in this team, you are front runners for the Super Bowl, but you don't need that to make a, a decent playoff run. Um, which is kind of a segue onto my onto my next question for you. And you mentioned a few names, but um, which quarterbacks would you look like? Would you look at in free agency or a realistic trade option um, that can come in? And I mean, because me personally, I don't think Zach Wilson. I don't think you even have a playoff shot with Zach Wilson. It's pretty. It's. I mean, even yesterday, it was all run 99% of the time when Zach Wilson was there. It was, it was as if you had no quarterback and you were playing with a wildcat like the 49ers did in the playoffs last year. Um, so, of course, like you need someone that can throw at least 10 yards, that can at least keep the, the defense somewhat honest. So which quarterbacks do you think um, can do that for you guys? Like via trade? Yeah, look, I... Yeah, I mean, look, there's the, there's the long shot options of, I mean, I don't think Tom Brady's happening, but, um, you know, I you obviously probably call and see what happens. Uh, but, you know, I, and I don't think at this point in the season, I know Minnesota probably, maybe if you called Minnesota in six weeks and said, we'll give you a first round pick for Kirk Cousins for the end of the year, and, you know, we'll try to go on a run here and, and see what happens. Yeah, that makes sense. I just don't see that happening now. Um, same thing with, you know, Matt Stafford in LA. It just doesn't feel like either of those teams are going to, they're going to sell in week two. They're more likely teams that, you know, you can see that happening mid year. Then you, you know, you look around the league. Um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's just, it's tough. You know, it's like, I, it's a Jameis Winston. It's a Taylor Heineke. It's Andy Dalton. Um, you know, the Jets have interest in Chad Henney. There's not a lot 
at this point in the year, you know, you, you've broken camp already. Look, Zach Wilson's been terrible, right? And, and there's no question about that, but he's a second overall pick. They were successful with him last year for a majority of the year. He seems to have fixed some things. He still doesn't, I mean, his first read's not there. He still makes, he still gets a little skittish and hesitant, and that, that's a huge issue. But, you know, you hope you're lying the run game, your defense. You hope Zach can make three or four plays, you know, a game that can kind of get the job done. This is a team with Zach Wilson last year. As much as he was terrible, they beat Green Bay by three scores in Green Bay. They beat Miami by over 30 points. Um, they should have beaten New England twice if Zach Wilson just, like, doesn't totally capitulate. Um, you know what I mean? Like, I think if he could just take care of the football and kind of just, I don't know, you, even a Case Keenum. You know, as a Vikings fan, you obviously know, like, if you have that elite defense and run game and some great weapons, can you just operate the offense a little bit? And, and I think – that's what Jets fans are hoping from Zach Wilson. I, I, whether it happens or not, um, you know, we'll see. But uh, I, I just – it'll be interesting to see how, you know, this looks because this team is, is certainly good enough to be a very impressive, you know, contender in the AFC. It's just now with no, with no Rodgers, this is a problem. Uh, it's safe to say. Um, I remember seeing Zach Wilson in London in his rookie season and instantly you could just see, okay – a second overall pick. Just the game didn't. moves too fast for him. Yeah, it, it just didn't make sense. I mean, like simple screen passes, if there's like one thing out of place, he can't seem to look past that and kind of maneuver that. And I mean, it's not it's not ideal for a, for a second overall pick. Um, a name you haven't mentioned, or names that you haven't mentioned are names in free agency, um, like, like a Matt Ryan or a Carson Wentz. I mean, do you think that would make sense? Maybe even a Cam Newton? Very, very unlikely, of course. But... Um, how how do those those things kind of weigh up? Yeah, look at those guys are just it's a lot. You know, it's like there's there's pretty specific reasons why they're they're not on rosters at the moment. Um, you know, you look at a Matt Ryan. Could Matt Ryan operate the offense? Probably, yeah, no no question. Does Matt Ryan have any interest in getting hit anymore? I don't know. And um, you know, a guy that's uber stationary. That the one thing you you hope is Zach is that. You know, this offensive line's not bad. It's not great. And you know, at least Zach can move around, so maybe it creates some plays, although unfortunately sometimes that's when he gets himself in the most amount of trouble. But, you know, that's why I kind of just question, like, a Matt Ryan. You look at a, a Carson Wentz, I know there's a lot of connections, uh, you know, with Joe Douglas being from Philly. And obviously when Wentz is, Wentz is on, he's physically gifted and he's gone to a Super Bowl. He's almost won an MVP. And all those things are true. But um, I just there's a lot of mistakes in there. And this is a team that – and I mean, I the part of the reason, my biggest reason why I want them to try to get an upgraded quarterback, it's not even that I think Zach like that someone's going to be so much better than Zach. It's that the stability of just knowing that like every play is not <laughs> your heart's not in your mouth every play because you have no idea what you're going to see. Like there's points in Zach's career, Zach's career, you know, I can you know you think back to the Eagles game, you think back to the first half against the Patriots last year, and other games where you're like, or this the fourth quarter against the Steelers, you're like wow the hell has this guy been? It's like 10 of 11 for 140 yards, two touchdowns against good teams. And then there's the games where he goes three of 500 and he has 12 yards passing and looks like, you know, he's no belong. He doesn't belong in the NFL. Right. So I think that's, that's kind of the, the hard part. But again, like with backup quarterbacks, that's kind of sometimes what you get. It's like they're a backup because they're either not physically that gifted or they're too up and down. And, um, you know, I, I just, it seems like the jets are all in on Zach. I, I wouldn't be, but Again, I don't run the Jets, so um, unfortunately, in this case, they're not. I don't think my opinion is going to matter much. Um, let's move a little bit away from the Jets. Uh, what do you think? That, how's the landscape of the um, the AFC East looking? I mean, before the Rogers injury, it was it was shaping up to be probably the best division in football. I mean, the Pats were going to be the least good team in that division, and they looked incredible after the first quarter against Philadelphia and obviously now Rodgers is injured i mean how how you how do you picture the um the AFC East yeah look the AFC East is interesting right like Miami had probably the most impressive week 1 uh, i mean i would argue the jets are the most impressive week 1 but obviously they lose Rodgers so i think that you know it's hard to say that they're the best team in the division although if Rodgers is healthy i think they're pretty clearly look at the best team in the division Miami the thing is, this division kind of feels the exact same as it did last year. Buffalo has a lot of problems, but they're still really good. And Josh Allen makes too many mistakes, but he's incredibly talented. 
Miami has got two superhumans at wide receiver and a quarterback that's super accurate but can't stay healthy. They have offensive line problems, and their defense can't stop a, can't stop a nosebleed. So that's their problem. Like Miami's really talented, and when they're on their day, they're good, but they're going to have to beat you 40 to 30 every single week, which in the NFL we know doesn't work. Um, New England, same thing as last year. Mac Jones looks good sometimes, looks terrible other times. They don't have a lot of offensive weapons that scare you. And their defense is good, and, and they're well coached. Like, they're going to win seven or eight games, right? Like, Miami's going to win eight to 11 games, depending on Tua's health. The Jets and, are really the wild card. It comes down to the same way it did last year. I think it's like if Zach figures out how to be 20 or 20, whatever that was, 17 or 2018 Case Keenum, sure. Like, the Jets could easily win the division. The problem is, is I just have no idea if that's going to happen. So um, I still think Buffalo ends up winning the division just because, based on, like, they're probably the most consistently – they have the least amount of true question marks, especially a quarterback and health and things. But um, it's anyone's race, honestly. Like this, It's a division that's awesome, but the quarterback play now in the division, you, you just really don't know what you're getting from week to week. I mean, I, I understand your, your Patriots um, conundrum, right? But I feel like last year wasn't an accurate representation of the Patriots. I mean, when you've got um, a defensive coordinator – calling the offensive plays um it's not it's not really ideal um his name eludes me um former lions head coach the defensive coordinator for oh uh, matt patricia matt patricia matt yes. patricia yeah. yeah so when you've got matt patricia calling offensive plays it's not really ideal i mean after the first quarter after the pick six etc um the last three quarters of the game i mean bill o'brien was calling some really, really good plays. They looked really, really good. And you've got um, Ramondre Stevenson and Ezekiel Elliott. They're going to run the ball really, really well. They always do. They've got decent number of weapons. They've got two tight ends that are that are always going to catch the ball um, in Hunter Henry and, um, and Gesicki. So um, they surprised me personally. Obviously, I wanted to see how they look um, in, a, in a new new style of offense with an actual offensive coordinator. So um, they might obviously be in play. Um, Miami looked absolutely impressive, and it's it, it makes no sense to me why their defense is uh, is as uh, as open as it is because they've got some really really talented players on that side of the ball, um, some good pass rushes in Bradley Chubb, which they traded for, um, and then obviously you've got Xavier Howard, Jalen Ramsey's going to come back, Javon Holland is there. They've got some really talented players on that on that side of the ball, so it makes no sense why they are just not good. Um, but yeah, uh, finally, I just wanted to ask, now that this situation has happened with Rodgers, what are your realistic expectations for the New York Jets? Uh, you've kind of answered it already, but what are your um, expectations for the New York Jets going forward for the rest of the season? Yeah, like I think uh, you look at the Jets, it's find a way to get in the playoffs. Um, and I just don't think that's an unrealistic expectation. I, I really don't. You know, you look at... I know it's Zach Wilson. I get it, and I'm probably trying to be cover up more optimistic just because of how shitty the last 24 hours have been. Part of my uh, part of my language, but like, no, it's, fine. it's I just don't. This team is seven and four last year, and on their third string quarterback, and they're playing a four string former CFL tight end at quarterback, and they still have a shot to go to the playoffs in week 17. Like in the same loaded AFC, right? Like, I just it's hard for me to be like, oh, they were. A game away last year, or really, I mean, it ended up being two games away, but they benched all their guys the last week of the season. But they were a game away last year from getting the playoffs in Week 17 with Chris Strebler, Mike White, Zach Wilson, and Zach Wilson with like zero shot confidence, just horrible, and and Joe Flacco, and like they almost made it in the still the same stacked AFC. And their end of the season schedule last year ended up being way harder than everyone thought. They was like, oh, they have Seattle and Detroit, and, and these teams at the end of the year in Jacksonville. All those teams are either playoff teams or. Um, you know, we obviously know what Detroit is now, right? So get the find a way to get in the playoffs. Playoff experience helps anybody. You get Rodgers back in 24 and, and you try to go in a Super Bowl. But for this year, like, throwing in the towel now to me feels just, like, pretty soft. I, I you know, I don't know. I mean, obviously, I know you're, you're a big soccer fan as well. I keep kind of referencing it. But, like, um, you know, Byron lost Robert Lewandowski two years ago. And I felt like they threw in the towel. I felt like they, like, were just like, oh. We're not going to be able to win the Champions League now. And, like, that's a horrible mentality to have. And, you know, you guys get hurt. <laughs> like, it happens. Uh, figure it out. I mean, 
obviously having a defensive performance like you did yesterday is is unsustainable. It's not going to happen every week. You're not going to get three intercepts. You're not going to have four turnovers and a and a punt return. I mean, that's not going to happen every week. These are all very unlikely scenarios. Um, but your defense is going to stop a lot of guys, right? So there's there's no reason for you to turn in the towel. I mean, less talented teams have made it to the playoffs with less talent on both sides of the ball, you know? Even if you run it every single play with Dalvin Cook and Brees Hall, you're going to be a very reasonable team. And um, regardless of what uh, what your coach says, I don't believe that you're not going to get a quarterback. I'm I'm sure um, this team. Oh yeah, I don't I don't buy that either. I don't, There's no I don't, I don't, no eye contact on that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean, with the way the Vikings season is going, um, obviously we lost the game that we should have won. Next, where are the Eagles, and then we've got the Kansas City Chiefs, and we've got a very, very hard schedule over the next five games. Wouldn't surprise me if we're like, um, if we're like two and six or two and five at some point, and then um, we're like, you know what? This is a loaded quarterback draft. Let's get what we can for um, Kirk Cousins and that I mean and then that automatically puts you guys back in that Super Bowl kind of conversation or a deep run in the playoffs kind of yeah. situation um, you, you mentioned something really quickly right. yeah. do you think Rodgers comes back next season I pray that he does but do you yeah think- 100%, I 100% okay I can, unless the Achilles is just totally screwed um, as a quarterback it's not like he's somebody that's going to be you know planting off that Achilles you know left and right uh, I, I see him coming back I don't he's got money on the table this he came here he seemed incredibly happy excited to be here I, I feel like he's a guy who uh, you know is here in 2024 yeah I mean I, I don't see I mean Rogers ego is too big for him to go out go out like that yeah I mean, he's Rod- not gonna go out like this Rod- Rogers story Rogers story ends with um, him winning a Super Bowl in New York and all of that and then I mean that's how I pictured it. I, I, I thought he would win a Super Bowl this year and, and um, sail into the wind. But Thank um, you for watching the Sports Room. If you enjoyed that, make sure you like, subscribe, and press the notification bell so you know the next time we upload. See you soon.